Very well, let's try three theorems. Well, let's try two theorems. Let's try two theorems that apply some ideas from plane separation. Let's look at the Ray theorem. And to let this get set up, we're going to let L be a line, A be a point on L, B is external to L. If C is on Ray AB and C is not A, then B and C are on the same side of L. That's the Ray theorem. I'm going to let L be a line. A is on line, on the line. B is not on the line. If C is on Ray AB and C is not A, then B and C are on the same side of L. This makes a ton of sense if you just take 15 seconds and draw yourself the picture. Take 15 seconds, draw yourself the picture. You draw something like this. A is on the line. B is not on the line. Here's Ray AB. Oh, golly. Here's Ray AB. C is somewhere on this ray, and it's not here. B and C are on the same side of L. So uh, let's sketch the proof. Here's what we need. We need BC intersect L to be the empty set. There are two cases. Case one is the case where C is between A and B. Case two will be the case where C is not between A and B, where B is between A and C. But if C is on this ray and it's not here, it's either in this area or it's in this area. I mean, obviously, if C is B, then B and C are on the same side of L. So that's a trivial case. So we'll consider the other two cases where C is between A and B and then where B is between A and C. So what do we know in, in this case? We know that A is not on segment BC. A is not an element of segment BC because C is between A and B. Thus, the intersection of line BC with L is the set containing point A, but because A is not on segment BC, it must follow that segment BC intersect line L is the empty set. Why? So if C is here, then here is segment BC. A is not on that segment. The line BC intersects line L in the only point it can. There's only one intersection point between two lines. But A is not on this segment, and so this segment doesn't hit the line. In the second case, the second case has B between A and C. We know that A is not on segment BC for the same reason. And line BC intersect L is the point A as before the segment doesn't intersect the line. It is a, a quite analogous argument. It's the same argument. Okay?
got to do one other definition before we do the big theorem. We got to talk about what we mean by a triangle. So we're going to let A, B, and C be non-collinear. We're going to define triangle ABC to be the union of segment AB, segment AC, and segment BC. Uh, which really means it's a trigon, not a triangle, because we define a triangle in terms of its sides. Uh, but that's the way we've always called it, and so that's the way we're going to call it. So when we say triangle, we mean the union of three line segments. So, time to deal with Pasha's axiom, which isn't really an axiom because we're going to prove it. So, it's Pasha's axiom. We're going to let triangle ABC be a triangle and L be a line such that none of A or B or C lie on L. If L intersects segment AB, then L intersects segment AC or segment BC. It must intersect one of the other two sides of the triangle. Just to be clear on this, here is triangle ABC. You have some line that intersects segment AB, but not at A and not at B, because none of A and B and C lie on L. What Pasha's axiom does is it explains that this line doesn't swing around, doesn't just end in some vortex here. This line that comes quote unquote into the triangle has to go out of the triangle somehow. It has to intersect either this segment or that segment. Doesn't say which one, doesn't care which one. So here's the way we're going to make the argument. I will not write down the argument. Here's line L. We're going to let H1 and H2 be the half planes defined by L. A and B lie in opposite half planes. We can say without loss of generality, A is in H1, B is in H2. The question is, where is C? C does not lie on line L. It, it does not. So it must lie either in H1 or in H2. If C lies in H1, where point A is, then B and C lie on opposite sides of line L, and segment BC intersects L. If C lies in, in half plane H2, on the B side of line L, then A and C are on opposite sides of line L, and segment AC intersects line L. But C has to be in one of those half planes, and so one of the segments AC or BC has to intersect line L. In fact, Pasha's axiom can be extended to show that line L can only intersect two of the three segments. It cannot intersect all three. Okay, that ends our look at the content behind plane separation. Uh, some examples will follow.